Hey, this is Jay from A Stitch in Time, starting a series of lessons on the Brother BES4 lettering software. This is a new software that came out about uh, two years ago from Brother, and it is very user-friendly and opens up a wide range of uh, options for our machines without costing a tremendous amount of money. This first lesson here, we're going to talk about how to open up um, designs, start creating new designs and working mostly with fonts and then we will move on to other things in future lessons. When you open the software, you'll get this blank screen, and in order to start a project, you have to go up to the top left-hand corner here where it says New, and when you click on that, it will open up a new screen. Now, some of you will think in better in metric, and some of you will think better in inches, and if you notice right up on top here, it's currently showing in metric. It says MM on the side here. If I just simply right-click on that, I can now see that I have both metric and English. I can switch to English. If I right click on it, I can also choose to show grid or my grid settings. So if you want to line some things up, that's very useful. To work with text, there is a whole toolbar and it's all run, done right here. And these are a lot of the text files. And they're very simple to use. We're going to be working primarily with this basic straight text here. But you can also have text on a path. Uh, you can have it follow the path, you can do vertical, you can arc it, you can create your own monograms, you can do stepped text, or you can even have spiral text, depending on what you're working with. But for right now, we're going to click on Normal, and then we simply come down here and we click somewhere in the open screen. And right now, you see it translates to this big cursor, and we're going to type in Stitch, except I need to spell. And right now, it's just giving me an outline. If I hit, uh, if I just click outside of there, it will turn it into stitches. And they look kind of grainy on here right now. At the top of the screen, if I want to see what they look like in real stitch out, I can click on 3D and we'll turn it into 3D stitches. But if I want to change this to a different font, I can click on it to select it. And right over here on the right, you see that this is a, a called an Aiden font. And when I put my mouse over it, I'm going to see if I can bring this over here just a little bit more so you can see what's happening. If I put my mouse over it, you see how it gives me uh, all the different recommendations. It shows me what fonts are in here, uh, what, what letters are available in here, and it also shows me the maximum and minimum heights. And this is important to know when you're working with some designs. But that's just found by hovering over top of it. And um, and then if I want to change the font, right here underneath it where it says Aiden, I can click on it. And these are all the fonts that are built into here. There's 200 fonts. Some of them are going to be, um, like here's a black tie large, and this is in 2 inch. Um, there's also um, black belt. And then there's also another one that is called bent. But when you notice when it says 8 millimeter, that's the maximum height you can set it at. 8 millimeters is one quarter of an inch. And so that is really tiny lettering, but it's perfectly digitized for doing those uh, recipe cards or things like that that you want to work with. But I can simply choose any, any font that I want. I can change the, the text right here. If I, and I can also choose whether if I have multiple lines, whether I want them centered or left justified or right justified. That's up to them, up to whatever I want. Here is where I can set my height. And so if I want this to be 3 quarters of an inch, I can type in point, oops, point 0.75, and that will change that. But none of these settings here happen until I click Apply. And once I click Apply, then it shows up over here. And I can say, ooh, that is not very legible. I don't like that the way that looks. Well, you simply select a different one and click Apply. Now you notice here it says that there's only an S. Why is that? Because if I put my mouse over top of here, notice that it gives me no lowercase letters, only uppercase. And so I have to go and find a different one that has both upper and lower case. And see, these are all uppercase. There's one that has upper and lower case. And now my stitches show up here again. I can change the height. 
I also have uh, some really nice tools around the around the, um, the stitches right here. If you notice, there's black squares or blue excuse me blue squares and blue diamonds in here. The blue squares is so I can change each individual letter. And so if I wanted to make this S bigger than all the others, I can click on that one time. And now I can take that, and I put my mouse on it, and I can make that stitch bigger. But now there's too much space between here and here. So that's okay. I can click back over here to one of these other, one of the other stitches. And now I can go to that little diamond, and if I click that, I can drag the other letters to the right. And this is called kerning. When you drag the diamond, it allows you to um, go between them and, um, and, and move them all apart a little bit so that you can um, uh, adjust the spacing in between them. That's how you would select your different stitches or different, different um, settings there. If I wanted to change, again, if I want to change the, the arc of the font, I can change it just by stretching this both to the top and to the bottom. I also have the ability to stretch, whoops, go back here. I also have the ability to click on that little green arrow and I can stretch it and distort it to make, a certain, make it fit a certain place. So if I have a four inch um, block that I want to fit it in, if I look down in the bottom left hand square, I can see this is 3.62 inches wide by an inch tall. And so if I want that to be just a little bit longer, I want that to fill up a four inch square, I can drag this over to make this exactly four inches and release it. And there we go. I also have the ability over here on the left hand side, there's this little purple square, and this allows me to make it italicized. And now it comes up with this little warning. Whenever you do something that's too, that creates a satin stitch bigger than 10 millimeters, it'll warn you. And that's really nice to prevent making an uh, embroidery design where you have half-inch long satin stitches that are not going to work really well. I know I'm, I'm not going to mess with this. I'm just going to click it OK and ignore that. But that's, where, that's how we could do that. You also can go up to this one. And this is going to change the entire height. This is where I can adjust it proportionally to fit whatever I want. Again, it's going to show me that warning. And then if I go to the top right-hand corner, there's an orange button, and that allows me to rotate it. If I want to add another line of text to this, I just simply click outside of it so I have my cursor back, and now I can type in in time. And again, I just click outside of it. I can put my mouse, anytime I get the little hand on it, I can click and drag it to wherever I want, and they're all ready to go. Let's say you want to change colors on this. Um, if you notice, there's a whole color bar right up on top of here, and these are currently set as the default to Brother Enhance. Now, Brother has about 120 colors, but most of us don't embroider with Brother. And if you look on the left-hand side, there's this little, it says Select Your Thread Chart, there is now these, all, all these thread charts are built right into. So whether you use Isochord or like a lot of people use Floriani, I can click on Floriani and I can scroll the whole way through here to find the color that I want. So if I want this in time and I want this to be a, um, an evergreen, I just simply click on that. And if I want this, um, this stitch up here, I can click on this one and I can change that to something a little darker, like a dark green. There, I hope that gives you an idea of some of the things we can do. And we'll be teaching more things in our class um, in the store. And I hope to have a few more lessons online here a little later.